guys welcome back Samsung has launched a lot of budget phones in different price brackets in 2019 and one of the most affordable of them is the Galaxy A10 there is only one model available and the pricing of it is 8419 rupees and for that price you get a phone which has 2 GB of RAM and 32 GB of internal storage which can be expanded with a micro SD card I really wish Samsung would have given us 3 GB of RAM but sadly this is what we get but still What's important is how the smartphone performs during your daily use and can it perform well enough in all these 5 factors to make the A10 a good budget phone. The first factor we are going to check is the design and the build quality. For the design, it's a standard Samsung design for budget phones in 2019. On the front, you get an infinity V notched display which has curved corners with fairly slim bezels and the main body of the phone is made of this very glossy plastic. This shiny plastic attracts a lot of fingerprints and also it will get scratched pretty easily. It doesn't feel very cheap but still compared to glass back phones you can instantly say that this is a budget phone. And the A10 it's a fairly light phone being just 168 grams. Now even though it's not a one-handed phone the size of the phone feels kind of perfect and also for the thickness it's just 7.9 mm. Now for the design there is a Samsung branding on the rear and also you get the vertical layout single camera with flash. It's fairly flush to the body of the phone and that's a good thing. But something I didn't like is the speaker placement. I don't know why Samsung did this but it's a really bad spot for a speaker. It would have been much better if Samsung placed the speaker on the bottom section. But instead on the bottom section you get the headphone jack, micro USB charging port and a microphone. For the charging port I really wished Samsung would have used USB-C but for the price it's fine. Now moving to the top portion of the phone, you get the secondary microphone and for the volume rocker and the on-off button, they are on the right side and they are made of plastic but they are really tactile and has good response. And finally on the left side is the SIM tray, just two nano SIM slots and also a dedicated SD card slot. Both the SIM slots support Volti and hence you can use two Geo SIMs if you want. And one more thing is the front glass, Samsung doesn't say whether it's Gorilla glass and during my testing time, I didn't use any screen guard, but still, there are no scratches. So like I said before, this is Samsung's new design trend. And I think we are now familiar with it. There are actually three color choices for the A10, and the phone I have here is the black one. It doesn't look proper black, but instead it looks kind of grayish black. And for the build, it's a fairly well-built phone with no flex or gap, but for sure, the phone doesn't look and feel premium. And hence for the design and build, for the price, I would say it's fine. The second factor that we are going to check is the display and the audio. The display used on the Galaxy A10 is a 6.2 inch HD plus display which has a resolution of 1520 by 720 with a pixel density of 271 ppi. This display has an aspect ratio of 19 to 9 and the display looks modern with curved edges and based on the panel quality it's a fairly decent panel. It's an LCD display and the colors are a bit dull but still for the price it's decent. The display has a warmer tone and for the viewing angles it's good and also the display gets sufficiently bright and hence outdoor visibility is not an issue. Same is the case when using the phone at night. The display gets dim enough so you won't have issues when using it in darker environments. But one issue here is the auto brightness sensor. The phone has an ambient light sensor but it doesn't respond well. I've noticed the same issue with the Galaxy M20 ambient light sensor and here also I have noticed the same problem and hence I had to turn adaptive brightness off. So overall for the display used on the Galaxy A10, for this price as I said before it's a fairly decent display. But when it comes to audio, the main speaker unit is a letdown. It's mainly because of its placement. It's on the rear of the phone. Now the speaker unit used is not a bad one and it gets fairly loud and is clear without sound cracking but it's facing away and hence the audio experience is not enjoyable. While gaming, you can easily cover it and hence we have to adjust the way we hold the phone. And same is the case while watching media. I really don't get it why Samsung chose the rear for the speaker placement and it would have been much better if it was a bottom firing speaker. Another issue with this speaker placement is when you receive a call. Now if your phone is on a table, the call alert gets muffled and you will probably miss the ring. But for the earpiece, it's a good one. Calls sound good and clear. Even though Samsung messed up with the speaker, you get a headphone jack and if you have any spare headphones with 3.5mm jack lying around, 
you can use it and the output from the headphone is good. You won't get any headphone bundled with the phone and if you're planning to consume media with this phone, I surely recommend you get an headphone because the display is big enough and fairly decent and if you want a good experience while playing games or watching a movie, you surely need an headphone. And that takes us to the third factor which is the hardware and performance. How the device performs is a very important thing. It's a budget phone but there are other options almost in this price range that performs really well and for the Galaxy A10, the processor that powers the phone is the Exynos 7884 which is an octa-core processor. It has only two high performance cores and six are high efficiency cores and for the GPU, it's Miley G71. And actually, I'm happy to say that this phone performs well. The OS is Android 9 with Samsung's One UI and One UI is one of the best skins I've seen in Android. And this is the best interface that Samsung has ever released. The UI is set well for 100 use and also the security patch update for the device is 1st Feb 2019. Now coming to the performance, it's smooth and works without much issues. Let it be scrolling through the menu, opening apps or just scrolling through a YouTube feed, everything works well. Even playing games like PUBG, it also runs without much hiccups but still you will notice some frame drops and occasional stutter at default medium graphics setting. And one thing I'm happy with the Galaxy A10 is that the device doesn't get warm even while playing high-end games. I wasn't able to test Asphalt 9 because for some reason Asphalt was shown as not supported and I think it's not because of the hardware but because the game developer has to enable support for the device. And actually it might have happened from the latest update because Asphalt 9 was supported on Redmi Note 7 but now I get the same error message in Redmi Note 7. And because of this error, I tested Need for Speed No Limits and it worked well. So if you're planning to game with the A10, even though it won't be a very smooth experience, you can still play high-end games. But one thing that's not great with the device is the RAM management. And actually that's expected because this device just has 2GB of RAM and the RAM management of the device is very aggressive. 2-3 to three light apps stay open in the background and that too not for a very long time and the phone constantly refreshes the memory. But the apps actually load pretty fast and overall for the price, during day-to-day -day use, the user experience is not bad and I feel even though it's not a powerful processor, everything works well and I didn't experience the usual Samsung slowdown. So for the hardware and performance, I would say for the price, it's average to good. And now to the fourth factor, which is a very important factor, is the camera. The main camera is a 13 megapixel camera with f1.9 aperture and there is a single LED flash right next to the camera. And to be frank, the shots that the rear camera captures are not good. Even in good lighting, the shots look kind of soft and the dynamic range is also very average. The colors are also not good and overall, I'm not happy with the camera performance both in good lighting as well as low light. Same is the case with the video. The maximum video resolution is 1080p at 30fps and there is no optical image stabilization and overall, you can record average clips with the rear camera. Now for the front camera, it's a 5 megapixel camera with f2.0 aperture and the shots, it again looks soft and blurry even in good lighting. And I will say, the front camera performance is also average. And also for the camera setting and shooting modes, you get only basic stuff and that's fine for the price of the phone. But for the picture quality that both the cameras capture, I really wish it was a bit more better. And now to the final factor, which is the battery. The A10 has a 3400mAh battery and the battery life is pretty good. Even during heavy use, I could easily make it through a day. And the average screen time I get is more than 6 hours and that's with mobile data turned on. Now, if you are a light user, you can actually get 2 days of use with a full charge. But getting phone fully charged is a problem because the included charger in the box is a 5V 1A charger and to charge the phone from 8% to 100%, it takes around 3 hours. And if you charge for 30 minutes with the included charger, you will get 16% of battery charged. Before reaching a verdict, there are some more other stuff to check like the phone doesn't have a fingerprint scanner, so for unlocking the device, you have to rely on pattern or pin unlock. You have face unlock here, which works at moderate speed and it unlocks even at dark, but it's not at all secure and it can be easily tricked with a photo and I won't recommend using face unlock if security matters to you. Then for the sensors, the A10 doesn't have all the sensors. It has accelerometer, proximity sensor and light sensor, but it doesn't have gyro and compass. And for the Bluetooth version, it has Bluetooth 5.0. That's all about the Galaxy A10. The A10 for the price has great battery life, average to good performance, a very average camera, not so bad HD display, and even though not a premium build, 
it still has a solid build with the new Samsung design team. It surely is not a perfect phone and actually it has some major setbacks like bad speaker placement, low RAM which leads to aggressive RAM management and it skips out on some important sensors. And nowadays if you are looking for a budget phone in the 10,000 price range, there are a lot of better options available. But still, while using this phone, there is a polished finish with the new Samsung software and that makes the user experience to an extent enjoyable. And one other major advantage that the A10s compared to its competitors is that it's available both online and offline. So if you plan to buy one, you can go to your local Samsung mobile store and get it right now instead of waiting for a flash sale. And my final verdict is, if all that you want is a phone that does all the basic stuff well and provides a very simple user experience and you like the Samsung tag, then you will be surely happy if you get the A10. But in doing so, you should keep in mind that you are getting a very average camera a plasticky build and you're not getting some basic sensors. That's all for this video guys. Hope you liked it. If so, please do hit the like button and please do subscribe. See you again in the next video. Till then, bye.